There we go. Okay. Okay, I don't know if anything is working here. Okay. All right, I think I got it. So, okay, so what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about um, using your um, Instagram, your Facebook, etc., in a way that produces response and likes and things like that. But really, this is more of a technical training. And I first taught this at um, uh, the chamber, and it's been a while since I've taught this, so hopefully everything is uh, good and up to date. So what I'm going to do is get my slideshow here. And this will be just a really quick. Okay, so I think what I did the last time is I want to make sure that if I switch you guys, that what comes up on the screen is actually what comes up on the screen. So let me hit play. And I'm going to wait to make sure it comes up on my Facebook that I'm looking at over here on my phone. Okay, so let's see what's happening. So you should see it come up. And you might want to take notes as well. There we go. Okay, so lights, camera, action. All right, so um, I first want to start with Instagram. And I want to show you four of my most popular posts on Instagram, which shocks me uh, when I still look back at them because they really had nothing to do with my business. Um, but people want to know what you're doing. And so any behind the scenes, anything that uh, you've got going on in life, people seem to be very, very interested in. So the first one is me at the chamber doing some training. Those were in the early days. And uh, I had posted something about how excited I was to do that. The one next to it at the top is our church. And I was getting ready uh, for that Sunday and just really um, took a moment to ponder and touch base with people. And then the one on the bottom was a ministry event I went to and I was so impressed by um, Pastor Jerry Tom with his headdress on I just had to snap a quick picture. Uh, he's of the Navajo Nation. And then the bottom one is my cat, Mr. Joseph, I call him, because he is a business partner because he always inserts himself into my business, which can be a little bit annoying, but he is a cutie. And what's also annoying is he's actually more popular than me. Now, this is from my old account uh, at Genius Communication on Instagram. I now have my introverted entrepreneur Instagram account, and I will tell you that if you want to see what really gets a lot of good interaction from me, it's my videos I do. Now, if you follow me on Facebook or if you're part of a private Facebook group, then you've seen some of those videos, but I get more response now with videos, but I have to say, Joseph still gets a lot of likes. So people need to see your face. Now, if you're introverted, that can be hard for you, but research shows that the more people see you, the more they like you, and, and that can, you know, again, be hard. I'm not very good at posing, so usually I inject some type of humor in there so I feel safer, so, uh, and plus, I look mad if I'm not smiling. So I always have to have, to have some type of smile. But I always tie the photos of my face um, with a behind the scenes, an inner anniversary, um, you know, caption this pic for humor or whatever, you know. So, uh, but really, I have transitioned from doing 
uh, these type of photos to more of the videos. Again, videos are key. More and more people are watching videos. You want to do it with captions. Uh, I taught how to do that about two weeks ago in this Facebook group. But for some of you, you may not be ready to do video. So try to get pictures of your face. And they do have to be pleasant. They don't need to be dark. You know, they have to be light where people can actually see you. And uh, so anyway, I'm uh, you know just going to apologize to all of you introverts that you don't want your face on Instagram or Facebook. And I'm saying you need to put your face on there so people will like you better. They want to connect. People want to connect today. Now, that takes me to my next point. Social media, which was the original intent of it was to, uh, you know, group people together, help people make friends, help them expand their network of relationships. But actually what it's done is it's created more isolation. It's created more loneliness. And so it makes your posts uh, and your purpose of your posts very important. And you should have the... Um, purpose, the intent to connect and build relationships. You want to weave your life story in with your business and brand story. And I think that's why video is so important today because, I mean, you can literally just share your journey or share a quick tip or anything like that. And um, people love it because they want to know, number one, how are you successful? Where are you struggling? Uh, what things have you done that have helped you because it may help them? So uh, relationship community is very, very important. I would say on Instagram, it's even more important. I like to liken a Facebook page with either a keg party or a holiday dinner where everybody gets drunk and starts fighting each other. And then you have Instagram, which is a more, you know, up uh, town um, cultured uh, you know, wine and cheese party or cocktail party. And so branding and relationship and all that's very, very important on Instagram. Now, if you have a physical product, there are tricks that you can do to make the pictures really, really pretty, which we're going to look at in a minute. But I do recommend that you take time to plan the color. Uh, you may want to have lots of white so you can see uh, on the the top corner and the bottom corner, I've got lots of white. Man, looking at these pictures, I sure did take good ones. I didn't like them at the time, but now as I'm looking at them, I'm like, those aren't too bad. And so one was I was working on my course. Another was a book I recommend. Well, actually, all three were books I recommended because I love to read. But you'll notice the other, the opposite ones, are on a black background. And uh, I basically um, looked up. Uh, or bought some board at Hobby Lobby, which I'll get to in a second, and um, put that underneath my stuff, and it worked out perfect. So uh, there's a few of the Instagram accounts I really recommend looking at. One is HelloFresh for Sigmatic, Cultivate What Matters, and she works his way for ideas. I also love Jasmine Starr, uh, Lynn, um, oh, what's her name? Kutchner, Jenna Kutchner. And then uh, Hillary Rushford's is really good. Then you can also sprinkle in pictures from other accounts and you need to uh, uh, credit them. So this was from my old Instagram. And these did pretty good. It helps you save time and money on stock photos. And uh, I love Unsplash. I love Darling. Um, so find accounts you really like and then you can use those. Today, what I do is I use a lot from different introvert Instagrams because there are some funny, funny stuff on there. And so I love humor. I love having fun. So I will um, use those and share them and I get some really good responses out of them. But again, my cat gets the best response ever still. But think of your caption. So you're going to have to figure out how your audience interacts with you. So the caption is what you type with the picture on Instagram or Facebook. And you can use it as a mini blog. And so you, you know, might separate the paragraphs with some emojis so people know it's a new paragraph and it kind of breaks it up. By the way, people love emojis. So I recommend that you sprinkle emojis into your captions. Uh, make sure it's not too much. It's kind of like salt. If you have too much, it ruins the dish. If you have too little, you can't taste it. So you want to have some emojis that will keep the eyes reading your uh, posts, your captions, and then you'll have to figure out if your 
audience likes long mini blogs, medium sized mini blogs, or very short and pithy <coughs> mini blogs. So because I have transitioned to do, doing more video, then what happens is I put shorter uh, captions, but there are times where I'll put longer ones. And then on my public Facebook page, I'm trying out a new thing, and I don't know if one post of the day it might have, where I'm doing longer uh, captions because I'm kind of going into the details of some of the past greats when it comes to business and just writing a little bit of their story to help us learn and be inspired and encouraged. So it really depends on your audience and it really depends on your purpose. It's rare now that I will use stock photos from Unsplash or Darling anymore because I just have a whole different thing I'm doing on my introverted entrepreneurs account. So you have to know what your brand story is. Is it inspiration? Is it humor? Is it education? Is it beauty? Is it relationship? Is it travel? You know, uh, whatever. Is it encouragement? Are you giving tips? Are you an expert in your field? I always recommend, like let's say like for example on mine, I educate, but I always have humor in there and also inspiration as well. So I usually pick about three and that's kind of my theme throughout my, my um, Instagram and my Facebook. But I'm definitely an educator, so you'll see a lot of that. But I always have to have humor because I absolutely love humor and I love encouraging people. And then also, what is your feel? So if you look at some of the best, and this is in particular for Instagram, when you look at some of the best Instagram uh, accounts, you will see either no theme at all. So if you look at Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk is his name, if you look at his, his, his color schemes, his, you know, hue, his, you know, all of that stuff, none of that's there. He is hands-on, this is my face, I'm talking to you, he's got his captions, he's got his photos from different events. There's no color or hue on his, but then if you go to like Jasmine Star, you'll see colorful, you'll see bright, but she has like a filter on all of her photos um, that well, she uses, uh, actually they're Instagram filters that she uses in all of them to make them even brighter and happier. Um, if you go to some other ones like, uh, oh gosh, I think it's Every Girl, they're really bright. But there's another one, it might be Charcoal Company. Uh, let me look here because these are really good ones to look at. Uh, let's see, I want to give you some really good ones. Um, the ones I am following. Okay. Uh, I just love Jasmine Star, by the way. Jenna Kutcher, she usually has a hue on hers. And then she's also got kind of like a pinkish uh, tone to hers. And so if you look, guys, you will see that. And uh, you'll you know be able to kind of plan your stuff. Like some things, you know, you're going to have where... Um, you know, for some reason I cannot find who I'm following. Like, how the heck did this happen? Um, where did the people I follow go? Oh, goodness. Well, I can't find it. I apologize for that. But you'll notice that they really plan out the positioning of their photos to where they're pleasing to the eye. So check out some of those. I'm still looking to try to find that one that I think you'd really like to look at because their profile is more subdued and muted and peaceful. If you look at mine, I have a lot of black and white and then I have two colors which are uh, the teal and the yellow because yellow is just a happy color and I want people to be happy when they look at mine. And so what is your feel? Always give value. So even if you can't figure out how to make it look uniform, if you give value, uh, it'll go a long, long way because people are looking for value, but it does also need to be pleasant for the eyes. And so here's my equipment. Um, I use a tripod. I also have what's called a ring light. Now, I don't have pictures of these for you, but a ring light is probably all you need. I have one that is on a, a tripod as well. It's pretty large, and um, I use it when I need it, whether there's poor lighting, etc., the best thing to do is if you can mix natural lighting with a ring light, but I also made my own uh, uh, two extra lights out of fluorescent lights at uh, uh, Lowe's, 
and I've attached them to tripods and I will do um, you know, like more professional lighting when I do my courses and stuff and I place them in the room a specific way. I used to use a microphone, but I found the latest iPhone and MacBook. I don't need it as much, but you can get them very cheap, like a YouTube microphone or something similar. Rode, R-O-D-E is a really good one. The background boards I bought at Hobby Lobby. I bought a white one and a black one, and I think they were under $3. They're back in the arts and crafts section, and, uh, and literally you just put your stuff on there and take your pictures. I have a teleprompter app called um, Big View, B-I-G-V-U. I will use that for some of my videos, but typically I'm just driving around talking to people, so I don't use that, and it's not as um, canned. My favorite uh, photo editing app is Visco. It costs $20 a year. My favorite movie app to edit my videos is iMovie. I no longer use Wondershare for Mora as much. I use Camtasia because I can do my captions super, super easy and create that neat little bar you'll see across my videos at the bottom that tells you how much progress you're making and watching it. I no longer use Adobe Premiere or After Effects because they um, require a monthly subscription. I'm just not going to do that. Another one that I have found since I did this training is called Plan, P-L-A-N-N, and it allows you to plan out your photos and videos to where it looks pleasing to the eye. So I highly recommend that you get that. It is free to use, and it lets you schedule posts for later if you want. Uh, I use Pic Jumbo sometimes still. Photolia is no longer in business, and then Canva.com is still my go-to for creating pretty graphics if I need it. So anyway, I hope that um, helps you guys with some of my tips and tricks. Let me get this switched over back to me. Okay. So anyway, that is the gist. That is how I do my videos and my pictures. And like I said, I did a training on how to use Camtasia. I think it was probably two weeks ago, maybe three. So I highly, highly recommend that you go back and look at that because it'll show you uh, everything that I do. And then also go to my Instagram account, Introverted Entrepreneurs, and that will kind of give you my feel and then uh, just look at some things that you like. You know, I uh, I combine spontaneity with planned. So I usually have the video topics I want to talk about already figured out. Uh, if something comes up in my day that I think you guys might benefit from, then I'll do that as well. Uh, I usually do have my photos even planned, but I also have a lot in there that is spontaneous or just something that I like. So my content creation is a mixture of going um, like as I go, but also having that plan in place. Some people will schedule all of their social media for the month. Uh, I only do that for Facebook, but even then I add some of the spontaneous. So it, to me, that just works for me. For you, you may want to have it planned out. But what I found is that if I do my social media as I go, it is more authentic, it is more real, and I get more responses that way. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys, and thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next week.